Good to the last drop. Come on. Okay, guys. Matt here, K9EI. I am the proud owner of a new ham radio toy. Check it out. Here it is. The Heath Kit SB200 linear amplifier. It's a tube driven uh, amplifier capable of 1000 watts PEP. Uh, it's got two 572 uh, tubes in it. <clears throat> And I got this from a friend of mine so I can run high power on the uh, general coverage band. So 80, 40, 20, 15, and 10. Uh, it's basically an untouched linear. Um, as far as I know, there's only been one change to it, maybe two changes. Right here, this little switch, I think that is a bypass switch. And what the bypass switches are for is so you can put the amp on basically like a standby mode and transmit it, transmit through it at 100 watts. And then when you're ready to turn on the power, you just click that on and then you got power. So I think that's what that's for. <laughs> it's a pretty common mod. And then the other thing is, um, if we go up here and look under the case, I already took the screws out, all the sheet metal screws I took out says that they replaced the bleeder resistor in 2017. So I think that's all that has been done to it. So I'm gonna take the panel off here so we can take a peek. First peek inside. <clears throat> okay, so I already know that this amplifier has been worked on and the telltale sign was that little piece of tape in there that said that the re resistor was replaced. So that's, that's a giveaway. But there's some other giveaways that you can look for on old gear, um, especially if you don't know the history, uh, if it's been worked on before. And the easiest thing is to look for missing screws or screws that don't match. For instance, look down here at the bottom of the amplifier. Okay, so here's the bottom of the amplifier and you can see it's got the little little feet on there and what that does is it holds in the internal chassis from the external case here this green part but so you need to take the feet off in order to move the front case out to take the final screws off but if you look everything they back then when they made these cases they used flathead screws and these screws are phillips see so at some point those were replaced so there's another telltale sign if you're trying to figure out if old equipment like this has been worked on before. Okay, <clears throat> so after a little bit of finagling, I got it to the point where we can take off the front cover, or the top cover. So here we go. First time I've looked inside of a SB200 Heathkit amp. Ooh, look at that. All right, so there's the 572Bs, those are the um, power tubes. Looks like they're Citrons. Um, I'm not exactly sure of the age. I was told that they are uh, good tubes uh, and the guy I bought it from, I trust. So I'll believe him. Uh, one of the mods I'm gonna perform is this fan right here. I'm going to remove that and I'm gonna place uh, two little DC fans underneath to blow the air up through the tube uh, vent. I, and a lot of times what we do is we'll get a 24 volt fan and we'll just run it at 12 volts. And that should um, be nice and quiet um, for, the, uh, for the cooling. Um, big uh, capacitor. This is what you call a doorknob capacitor. Variable capacitors for the tuning and antenna matching. And here is the coils for 80, 40, and 20. I think the other ones are 15 and 10. Um, I think these are circuit breakers in case something happens in the power supply section, which is right here. And this is the area of my concern is these six capacitors. So uh, as far as I know, 
Yep, they're paper caps, which means they're probably filled with wax. And they've been in here since the amplifier was, was built. And you can look in there, you can kind of see the big resistors in there. I think those are originals. Yeah, I think those are originals. Um, but I'm definitely going to replace these with new electrolytics. Um, as you can see, it looks like this tape was added for some reason. And oh, you can look, there's a modification that I was gonna do. So on the back of the meter face, there's diodes. And what those diodes are for is in case one of the tubes goes, it can uh, damage the meter. And these pretty Heathkit meters are getting hard to find. So that's a good mod that's already in there. So as you can tell, with just a little research, um, you can see if things have been modified, obviously by this electrical tape. Uh, the diode is a mod. This is basically it for uh, an amplifier. 1000 watt PEP amplifier. So it should do uh, 500 watts easy on CW. But yeah, here's the amplifier. Here's the um, circuit breakers. And then you got the amp stages in here. That's it. Real simple stuff. And then you've got this beast of a transformer. Um, and it's already wired for 220. And then we've got some coils back here. This is all a learning process for me. Um, but this is how basic tube amps are, um, which makes it kind of cool because they're they're easier to work on because they're you know big and things are accessible. And really, all I need to do to replace these is pull the power supply board out and just desolder these, and then put in six filter caps around the same value. Um, uh, the trick being that you get ones that can handle high heat, so if, and longer life so like between five and ten thousand hour caps if you can find them for a decent price they're about three to four dollars a piece so that's not difficult or expensive to work on okay one thing i noticed about this amplifier that is different from stock is this connector here that is an end connector and they did not have end connectors um also there's some writing on here about the antenna relays um, if it's already been modified for keying modern rigs, that's a good thing. Otherwise, um, for the antenna relay circuit, what you want to do is you want to install like a relay buffer from your radio um, to the uh, to the inputs of this uh, antenna relay circuit because this is high voltage, and high voltage will smoke the uh, the input of your your radio. Not good, especially if uh, your radio is an expensive one. This is also different. This was a um, stock and RCA connector, and this is an SO239. Um, there's a, it looks like it's bent right here. The teeth are kind of funky. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and I'll replace this with a new one, with a silver Teflon one. And I may replace this, just so it's not as annoying, um, with another silver Teflon SO239. So there you have it. There's my uh, new to me uh, Heathkit SB200 amplifier. I'm super freaking excited about it. Um, I can't wait to get on the air. Well, first I gotta play around with it on sideband and then uh, we'll try it on CW. Um, but uh, the issue that I faced before I even get it on the air, well, there's, there's multiple issues. One, it's wired for 220, which is great, but my shack does not have a 220 outlet yet. So I need to run um, a new uh, 220 line so I can run this thing on 220. Uh, the other issue that I have is my antenna out at the uh, in the backyard is an inverted L with a AH4 auto tuner at the feed point and those auto tuners can only handle 125 watts so if I key up with this thing on it it'll smoke it for sure thanks for checking out my video if you like this please give me a thumbs up or leave a comment below see you later k9ei